Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Here are your Linux, open source and privacy news for the first half of December 2019. Let's start. December the 1st. KDE announced that they will better support GTK apps using client-side decorations, of which there are many, namely most header bar enabled apps. They enable support for a specific protocol, so GDK windows will now display drop shadows and correct header bars in KDE as well. This is fantastic, and I love to see desktop environments collaborations like these. December the 3rd. Elementary OS 5.1 Hera was released. It's a minor version, but not in the features department. If you've been using Elementary OS Juno, you already have all the improvements it ships with. If not, you should give it a try again, unless you really don't like it for some reason. I have a complete video on that release where you'll get all the details if you're interested. Firefox 71 was released with support for MP3 decoding on all platforms, a better integrated password manager and more information on what Firefox blocks on web pages, with a notification being displayed when a crypto mining script is being blocked. The update should already be in your package managers right now. The XVK 1.4.6 was released. It fixes crashes when changing the display mode, improves performance over time on games where the CPU is the bottleneck, and more importantly, adds fixes so that Warcraft 3 Reforged can now run on Linux. Final Fantasy XIV and American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator 2 should now run better as well. December the 6th. NVIDIA will apparently host a talk at the GPU Technology Conference with a session titled Open Source, Linux Kernel and NVIDIA. The talk details seem to indicate they plan to expose some future plans for their Linux support and the Nuvo driver, which is great news. If NVIDIA open sourced their drivers, or at least gave a helping hand to get Nuvo in shape faster, it would make a huge difference in terms of gaming on Linux. The proprietary driver works well once installed, but it has issues, notably with screen tearing, so having a nice open source stack would be fantastic. December the 9th. Ubuntu started a survey about their next LTS, Ubuntu 20.04. It takes about 5 minutes to fill, and will ask you about your uses, what you like and dislike about Ubuntu, and what you would change. I don't know how the answers will be collected and used, but it's never a bad thing to give people your opinion, especially when they ask for it. Disney Plus now works on Linux machines. It didn't take long for them to fix this, so it's pretty nice. You might have to enable DRM in your browser for it to work, but there are definitely reports that everything is functional now. If they could release that service in more places, for example France, maybe I could try it out myself. December the 10th. The Microsoft Teams client is now available on Linux. While I never tried it, it looks like a good alternative to Slack, since it integrates pretty well with Office. This level of integration is not as useful on Linux until Microsoft bites the bullet and brings the suite to our open source platform, but in the meantime, this still shows good support from the Redmond giant. Maybe things are changing. December the 12th. KDE released the KDE application suite version 19.12. It contains a bunch of updates to all major KDE applications. Highlights include Kenan Live using a lot less memory, being speedier with audio thumbnailing, and supporting a brand new audio mixer. KDE Connect now has a whole new SMS app which lets you see the whole conversation history and control the whole computer's volume from your phone, and the Eliza Music Player now supports high DPI screens and web radios. These new apps should be packaged by your distro soon if they are not already available. Some of them will probably appear on Flatpak as well. December the 13th. Zorin OS 15.1 was released, and it improves on its already excellent base. Zorin Connect, the rebranded version of KDE Connect, now allows to move the pointer by moving the phone itself. It ships with Game Mode, a performance enhancement tool for games, and the auto switch between Dark and Light Mode can now be configured manually. If you're looking for a simple, beautiful and well-integrated distro using GNOME, Zorin OS is a great choice. I have a video on the initial release of version 15 if you want to take a look at it. In a dedicated blog post, Fedora and GNOME developers explain they are working on improving dual GPU support. Starting from GNOME 3.36 and Fedora 32, the Switcheroo Control API will be extended to allow for better on-the-fly GPU switching with NVIDIA devices. If I understand it correctly, it would mean that separate applications could be run by either the integrated GPU or the dedicated one by using this API. Other desktop environments could take advantage of this as well, so I hope it becomes a standard. It would really help on powerful laptops and probably improve battery life quite a bit on these devices. 
Proton 4.11-10 has been released with support for playing Halo the Master Chief Collection out of the box without any tweaks. Mouse handling has also been improved and controller support received some attention as well for specific games. They also added an upscaling mode which should make for better image on high resolution devices. As always, the various libraries have received an update as well including DXVK, F-Audio and D9VK. The Steam client should download that update all by itself. In totally related news, D9VK has also received an update, bringing it to version 0.4. The compatibility library can now access more than 4GB of video RAM on 32-bit games and should help games that have been expanded with mods and tend to use a lot more resources than the creators intended. There are also fixes for a lot of games, notably The Sims 2, Vampire the Masquerade, GTA San Andreas and Crysis. This little tool is shaping up very nicely and is no part of Proton, so everyone should see the benefits pretty soon. December the 15th. It seems that Google is now blocking less used browsers on Linux such as Falcon or Conqueror. Gmail, Google Maps or Google Docs seem to display a warning for some users that the browser might not be secure and ask users to use a supported browser. This is something I hoped we would never see again, but here we are, a full-on web monopoly preventing users to use whatever they want to. Now, if you're thinking that it's not so bad and it's just small browsers, well, the Vivaldi team, using Chromium as a base, has also explained they had a bunch of issues to get services to load. DXVK and D9VK have merged into a single project. This was completely unexpected, and the whole new DXVK is now a full DirectX 9 to 11 translation layer, and users now have to track only one project, which is always nice. We'll have to see if VKD3D, the DirectX 12 translation layer, joins the bandwagon as well to integrate everything in one place. These projects really have made Linux a viable gaming platform for everyone, with support for a lot of AAA games just a few days after their release, and I can't thank them enough for simplifying my gaming life. And there you go for the first half of December. I hope you guys enjoyed, let me know if I missed anything big, and don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!